Hello everyone! Welcome to Teacher Hanji's channel. For today's tutorial, our lesson is about ratio and proportion. First, let us define what is a ratio. A ratio is the comparison between two quantities of the same units. It is also the result of comparing them by division. The ratio or rate can be presented in four ways and can be written as A to B, a is to B, A slash B, and A over B. So let us have some examples that related to a ratio. Number one, find the ratio of A to B if A is equal to 6 cm and B is equal to 8 cm. So if you notice in our given, they have the same units. If that is the case, then let us simply write the ratio of A to B which is equal to 6 is to 8, or 3 is to 4. So we obtain 3 is to 4 by getting the simplest form of 6 is to 8. Let us have example number 2. Find the ratio of 1 meter to 20 centimeters. So from here, the units used is meter and centimeters in which their units are different. So to obtain same units, let us convert first to meters into centimeters. Since we know that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter, so it means that we will use 100 centimeter here to represent 1 meter here. So in that case, they have the same units now. Therefore, the ratio will be 100 is to 20 or 5 is to 1 by getting the simplest form of 100 is to 20. By this example number 3, find the ratio of 2 weeks to 4 days. Same with problem number 2, we have here the units weeks and days in which weeks and days are different. So it means we need to convert weeks into days. And since we know that 1 week is equal to 7 days, then 2 weeks is equal to 14 days over 4 for the given days here, in which 14 over 4 is equal to 7 over 2. Remember that a ratio can be written in column form or in fraction form. So in number 1 and 2, I use the column form to represent the ratio of the given statement. While in number 3, I use the fraction form to represent this statement. So let us have more examples for ratio. Points G and H are midpoints of sides DE and DF, respectively. Give H ratio. Number one, find the ratio of DG to DE. So we have here DG and DE. Since we know that G is the midpoints of the side DE, then it means the measure of DG is equal to the measure of GE. It means that if this one is equal to 4, then G is equal to 4 as well. Remember that in our situation, we need to get the measure of DE to find the ratio of this one. So DE is equal to 8 by adding the length of DG and GE. Therefore, the ratio of DG to DE is equal to 4 is to 8 or 1 is to 2 by getting the simplest form of 4 is to 8. Let's have number 2, DH to DF. So we have here DH to DF. Since H is the midpoints of the side DF, it means that the measure of HE is equal to the measure of DH. So it means that DH is equal to 6. Remember that in our situation, we need to get the value of DF, which is equal to 12 by simply adding 6 and 6 here. Therefore, the ratio of DH to DF is equal to 6 is to 12, 6 for the DH, and 12 for DF, or 1 is to 2, by getting the simplest form of 6 is to 12. Let's have number 3, DH to EF. So we have DH, which is equal to 6, and EF here. Since we know that G and H are the midpoints, so it means that GH is the midline of our triangle in which in the midline theorem the midline is equal to the half measure of the third side in which ef here is the third side of this triangle it means that if the midline is equal to 5 then the third side will be equal to 10 therefore 
BH is equal to 6, EF is equal to 10. And the ratio will be 6 is to 10 or 3 is to 5. By simply getting the simplest form of 6 is to 10. Last one, number 4. DG to GH. DG is equal to 4 and GH is equal to 5. Therefore, the ratio will be 4 is to 5. We can also use the fraction form of this one to represent the ratios. For example, in number 1, it can also be written as 4 over 8 or simply 1 half by getting the simplest form of this one. Number 2, it can be written as 6 over 12 or 1 half. Number 3, it can be 6 over 10 or 3 fifth. And for number 4, it can be 4 fifth. So let us now move on with the definition of a proportion. When we say proportion, it is the equality between the two ratios. This time, we need to have two equal ratios to says that those ratios are proportional. If ratios A is to B and C is to D are equal, the proportion can be written in two ways. First, we have A is to B is equal to C is to D, which is the column form, or A over B is equal to C over D, where B is not equal to 0 and D is not equal to 0. Take note that the denominator should not be equal to 0 to avoid undefined terms. Each quantity in proportion is called a term. So we have here A, B, C, and D. So these are the terms of our proportion in which B and C are the means, A and D are the extremes. So let us have this example. So in this given example, 15 and 6 are the means, while 2 and 45 are the extremes. And the terms are 2, 15, 6, and 45. Another example, we have 4 over 12 is equal to 2 over 6, in which 12 and 2 are the means, and 4 and 6 are the extremes. So we have here the terms 4, 12, 2, and 6. It is important that we know the means and the extremes of our given proportion in order for us to identify whether the given pair of ratio is proportional to each other or now, so let us have this activity. Let us identify the means and the extremes. Can the given pair of ratios form a proportion? So let us have example number 1. 4 is to 5 and 24 is to 13. So for us to know if the given pair of ratios form a proportion, we need to get the product of the means and the extremes and they should be equal. So for number 1, let us get the means which is 5 and 24, while the extremes is equal to 4 and 13. So for us to know if this pair forms a proportion, let us find the product of means and the extremes, in which for the means we have 5 times 24 is equal to 120, and for the extremes we have 4 times 30 is equal to 120 as well. Since they have the same product, so it means that this pair of ratios form a proportion. Let us have number 2, 7 over 10 and 35 over 70. Now let us identify where is the means and the extremes of these ratios. So we have 10 and 35 for the means, while 7 and 70 for the extremes. Now, let us tell whether this pair of ratios forms a proportion by, get, by getting the product of the means and the extremes. They should be equal. So, we have 10 times 35 is equal to 350, while 7 times 70 is equal to 490. So, you see, their product is not equal. Therefore, this pair of ratios did not form a proportion. So, let us have example number 3. 6 over 14 and 9 over 21. So again, let us find first the means which is 14 and 9. Extremes which is equal to 6 and 21. So let us tell whether this pair of ratios form a proportion by getting the product of the means and the extremes. For the means, we have 14 times 9 is equal to 126. While for the extremes, we have 6 times 21, which is equal to 126 as well. 
So it means that these ratios form a proportion. And let us have our last example. We have a pair of ratios. 22 is to 10 and 88 is to 40. So again, let us identify first the means, which is 10 and 88, while the extremes are 22 and 40. Let us now tell whether this pair of ratios form a proportion by getting the product of means and extremes. So means is equal to 10 times 88, which is equal to 880, while the extremes will be 22 times 40, which is equal to 880 as well. Since their product are equal, then we can say that these ratios form a proportion. Let us have some word problems involving proportion. The ratio of boys to girls in the mathematics club is 4 to 5. If there are 25 girls in the club, how many boys are in the club? So from here, let us find first the ratios of boys to girls, which is equal to the ratio of 4 to 5, for us to get the number of boys in the mathematics club. Therefore, our equation will be, Boys over girls is equal to 4 over 5 since we have here 4 to 5. For the second ratio, boys will be represented as x since we are looking for the number of boys in the club. Over 25 for the total number of the girls in the club. So from here, let us use cross multiplication or simply multiply the means and the extremes of our equations. Therefore, we will have 5x which is the product of our means 5 times x while at the right side we have the product of the extremes which is 4 times 25. Therefore, this one is equal to 5x which is equal to 100. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 20. And there are 20 boys in the mathematics club. Let us have second example. In a photograph, Jane is 9 cm tall and her brother John is 10 cm tall. Jane's actual height is 153 cm. Assuming Jane and her brother's height in a photo is proportional to their actual height. What is John's actual height? So from here, let us form first the ratios of Jane and her brother. Therefore, it can be... 9 over 10 for their first height here which is 9 for Jane and 10 for her brother which is equal to 153 from the actual height of Jane while her brother will be represented as x here since we are looking for his actual height. So using a cross multiplication or simply get the product of the means and the extremes to find the value of x which is the actual height of John, then this one will be equal to 10 times 153 for the means is equal to 9 times x for the extremes. And this one is equal to 9x is equal to 1530. Dividing both sides by 9 to get the value of x, therefore, x is equal to 170. Thus, John's actual height is equal to 170 cm. Let us have our last example. In the diagram shown below, PQ is parallel to ST. While QS is equal to 8, SR is equal to 4, and PT is equal to 12. Let us find the length of PR. If they form a proportion, SR is to QS, is equal to PR is to PT. So from the given proportion here, let us simply substitute the values of SR, QS, and PT to find the length of PR. But for now, let us X be equal to the length of PR. Therefore, our proportion will be 4 is to 8 in which 4 is the length of SR and 8 is the length of QS is equal to x for the length of PR is to 12 for the length of PT. So for us to get the value of x, let us find the product of the means and the extremes. Therefore, that one will be equal to 8 times x for the means is equal to 4 times 12 for the extremes. Therefore, this one is equal to 8x is equal to 40.
8. Let us divide both sides by 8 to get the value of x. Therefore, we have x is equal to 6. Thus, PR is equal to 6 units. So that is how we deal with the ratio and proportion. Thank you for watching. See you again in my next video. Bye!